Memphis State final score 27 to 23 today. Kenny Roberts with a couple of touchdown runs for Rocky Felker, who definitely needed a victory in that game today. Now, Lee Corso is by my side, certainly the key next week. Tennessee, who I think is in trouble taking on a Mississippi team that had a week to prepare, and Tennessee's going to be pretty beaten up in that game, but it could be for the Sugar. Good point. You know, Mississippi had the week off. They're physically and mentally rested. Having coached in a situation like Johnny Majors is, when you lose a big game like Notre Dame, it takes till Wednesday for your football team to forget it. Tennessee now has a disadvantage against Mississippi. All right, we're going to move on now and talk about the ACC, where Virginia Tech played Georgia Tech. And some apologies are needed here for Scott Sisson. We mentioned earlier he missed four field goals. He really didn't. He was two out of four, so he was 500 on the day, and he won the game with eight seconds left. For the second straight week, Scott Sisson, the hero, 6-3 to three the final. Virginia and North Carolina, 24-10. to 10. The Cavaliers move on. Sean Moore, 55 touchdowns. That tie has been Bennett for the ACC record. Maryland and Penn State playing earlier today. The Nittany Lions looking ahead to the Irish next week on ESPN, beating the Terps 24-10 to 10 in that ballgame. Duke and North Carolina State, 16 to nothing. Dick Sheridan's club pitches a shutout against the Blue Devils, who had been scoring at will the last two weeks. So... The situation right now, relative to the bowl circumstances, the Fiesta Bowl looks this way, and we'll explain it in a moment when we have Don Myers, who is the TV uh, Team Selection Committee Chairman, Virginia against the SEC runner-up, or Notre Dame, or the, uh, another SEC runner-up. The point here is two teams will go. It could be Virginia-Notre Dame, could be Virginia against the SEC runner-up. Penn State is out of the mix, and we're going to explain why uh, in a bit, uh, so stay with us for all of that information. Now, obviously, the major story is that situation relative to the uh, Fiesta Bowl and those possibilities. We are going to discuss live those possibilities with Don Myers, who is standing by with us. And Don, I want to talk about, first of all, why Penn State is out of the mix and how the discussions with Virginia went today in the wake of that victory over North Carolina. Well, earlier in the week, we were trying to put together an arrangement with three bowls and a number of teams, and one of those teams included Penn State, and one of the bowls included the Cotton Bowl. The problem we ran into was we kept coming back to the possibility that Penn State could wind up in the Cotton Bowl against Texas, and that was not acceptable to the Cotton Bowl or the two teams, Texas and Penn State. So earlier, in the middle of the week, rather, we told Penn State that we couldn't work something out along those lines. They wanted some decision as soon as possible, and we told them that we couldn't make one until these games were over today. All right, Don, I want to obviously we'll go back, and for those of you that haven't been following this story, due to the referendum on Tuesday that was voted down to make Martin Luther King's birthday a holiday in the state of Arizona, obviously much talk about Virginia not coming to your bowl game and the fact that you might even move the site of this bowl game to either Florida or Texas or maybe even California. Let's talk first of all about the ongoing conversations with UVA, how they went today. Well, the conversations with the University of Virginia have gone very well. They've been very positive. We understand that the team uh, that has taken a vote and they have uh, voted to come to play in the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Uh, our conversations with Virginia basically are these, that uh, we have told them that we would extend a bid to them on the 24th of November when bids can be extended, and they have told us that uh, they have every reason to believe that they would accept that bid. Now, if there is a problem with either one of the two teams that could come to your bowl, you are willing to move the site. Can you expound on that? Well, what we've done, uh, Tim, is we have developed a contingency plan. Uh, the two universities that participate in our game with the Fiesta Bowl will evaluate the situation in Arizona. And if the universities tell us that they don't think it would be in their best interest to have their athletes uh, play in this uh, state because of what occurred last Tuesday, then we will play the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, but we will not play it in Arizona. We will play it at another location. All right, now obviously the income would be 75 to 125 million that would be lost to the state of Arizona if the game were not played in Tempe. But what I want to discuss with you now is what could possibly the legislature in the state of Arizona do to keep this from happening, to keep you from having to shift sites? Well, we've talked to, or I've personally talked to the leadership in the Arizona Senate and the House and the governor. And I believe that they are going to have a, there will be a concerted effort to resolve this issue. Uh, I think in order for the game to stay in Arizona, the universities are going to have to be satisfied that there is a process underway to create a civil rights day in Arizona. And I think 
that can happen. We're optimistic that it will happen, and we're going to leave no stone unturned to keep the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona. It's an Arizona institution, and we want to keep it that way. All right. Thank you very much, Don, for taking time out. I know it's been a very busy week uh, for all of you that have been connected with that bowl. Thanks for taking time out. Thank you, Tim. It's been a hectic Saturday. <laughs> you bet. And it usually is, isn't it? Stay with us. The US F&G Halftime Report continues in just a moment. Who's number one? Well, Houston may not be after tonight. More scores coming up. For Ford Lincoln Mercury has been serving the Golden Triangle since 1944 with free loaner cars and with over $7 million of inventory to choose from. Right now, during Kensal Ford Lincoln Mercury's next year sale, you can make your purchase with no money down and no payment till next year. Over $7 million in inventory to choose from. It's Kensal Ford Lincoln Mercury's next year sale with no money down and no payment till next year. Kensal Ford Lincoln Mercury, 415 South 11th, Beaumont, Texas, 838-6611. Just the facts from ProCell Performance in Orange, remanufactured V8, installed in most American cars, just $14.95 with a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty. From the number one engine performance center in the triangle, ProCell Super Sale going on now. Chevy Short Block 305 or 350, just $289. Chevy 350 stock cam and lifters, only $89. At the number one performance center in the triangle, ProCell Performance, 105 Green Avenue in Orange. are a big part of the 76-year tradition of the Southwest Conference. In 1989, Andre Ware became the Southwest Conference's fifth Heisman Trophy winner. And four teams finished among the nation's top 20. And this conference will be here and it'll be strong long after I'm gone as a coach and probably long after I'm on this earth. The Southwest Conference, home to your heroes, then and now. Although I have decided to forego my final year of college eligibility to play football in the NFL, I will continue my education. Next spring, I will return to the University of Houston to make good on my promise to myself and my mother. College football to me means a college degree, and my education will be with me long after I stop throwing a football. College football prepares you for the game of life. Boy, if things continue to shake down the way they are in the game in Austin tonight, aren't things looking good for the Buffaloes of Colorado? They'll move right up to number two with a date with Notre Dame on New Year's Day. 41-22, they win today. Nebraska and Kansas, 41-9. Big Red rolling into the Citrus Bowl to meet Georgia Tech. Iowa State and Missouri, 27-25. The folks from Ames continue to get better. Kansas State and Oklahoma, 34-7. The Sooners get the victory. Kansas State has not won in that game since way back in 1970. Stay with us. We'll discuss who's number one in our roundtable with Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson, Lee Corso and I. Stay with us. the bumpy. Whatever the road, a Michelin is built to give you all the miles we're famous for. Ride them, cowboy. I remember my first weekend away. I saved for half the summer, but hey, it was my money, and it still is. Thrifty. So to get away today, I rent from Thrifty. Thrifty. At Thrifty Car Rental, a Chrysler Fifth Avenue safety equipped with an airbag is just $39.95 a day. Like my grandma always said, if you know where you're going, you better know how to get there. Thrifty. Thrifty. Because it's your money. Thrifty. You can spot someone who saved money with a second-rate antifreeze a mile away. Not all antifreeze is the same. Nothing beats Presto. And that's something you might appreciate down the road.
The University of Houston is changing minds. UH students have more responsibilities than just being students. Our students bring real world experience into the classroom because I think teaching and research are inseparable. We believe in the University of Houston education because we hire their graduates. Today's student must be prepared for the 21st century. The University of Houston, changing minds. We're putting it in your hands, having some fun. 1-900-786-2255. Who do you think's number one? Notre Dame right now has the edge. And they have the edge in the AP poll as well. We welcome you back, and I'm going to throw it right back out to Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson. Get their thoughts, and fellas, uh, on a frenetic Saturday of uh, frenetic finishes, what do you think? Jimmy, as far as the number one team, I assume is what you're talking about. I like Notre Dame, and I think that right now they are deserving of that spot. But I'll tell you, I also will give you a hedge. I'm not convinced that there still is a dominant team in the nation this year. Well, I think in 1990, you could group about 15 teams that could all beat anybody else on any given night, home or away this year. But I've liked Colorado all year. I think they've played the toughest schedule, and I want to see a rematch. I want to see Colorado versus Notre Dame again. Come on, Notre Dame, play them in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> Fellas, I, I happen to agree with Mike Godfrey right now and, and, and with you too, Gary Danielson, that Colorado should be in the catbird seat. But you know, if you really love college football and you want to see it change, I think you have to root for Houston in the second half of this ball game because they could make it a scarred national championship with a probation plague team. And I really think that's a possibility. Lee, what do you think? Okay, first of all, don't worry about it. You're going to see Colorado and Miami in the Orange Bowl. That's for God. But remember, my Notre Dame has beaten Michigan, Michigan State, Miami, and Tennessee. What? They're number one without a question. Well, I think you met Colorado and Notre Dame oh, in Miami me. Yes, Colorado. at the Orange Bowl. Thank All you. All right. Stay with us. More of the second half coming up. Western Sizzlin's lunch specials. Chicken breast platter or chicken fried steak, just $2.99. Or the lunch buffet, only $3.99 at the Western Sizzlin on 11th Street, Beaumont. This vehicle can take you to places no other vehicle can to the silicon landscapes of tomorrow's supercomputers, or as far as your ability and imagination will allow. But only if you don't bail out. So stay in school. Brought to you by the United States Air Force. If you think bowling is still in the dark ages, think again. The Crossroads Bowling Center introduces Color Vision Plus, the automatic scoring system that lets you see your scores in seven exciting colors. See your spares, your strikes, even your turkeys flash on the overhead screen. Summer leagues are forming now. Some lucky leaguer will win $1,000 in cash at the Crossroads Bowling Center on Dowlin Road across from Parkdale Mall. University is its library, an essential resource for pursuing knowledge and exploring ideas. The University of Texas at Austin has the nation's sixth largest academic library, an astounding quantity of materials that is matched by its quality and diversity. From the latest scientific information to the earliest printed books, the university's library, a reflection of our civilization, a foundation for learning in the information age. Syracuse has already lost today to Tulane, and they're going to the Aloha Bowl, and Arizona's going there as well, and this score stands up. This is another strike against the bowl decisions being made this early. Let's get back out to Texas and Houston, Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson. Thanks, Tim. 28 to 10 are scored at halftime as the Houston Cougars come back on the field for the second half of play. And let's go down to the field and get a report from Neil Lomax. Well, uh, Gary and Ron, I was very fortunate to be allowed by John Jenkins into the Houston locker room at halftime. Obviously a very disappointing and shocked group. John Jenkins did mention, though, this crowd's going to be a very, very disappointed crowd when we score 20 to 30 points in the second half and beat Texas. A lot of hangs are being hit. The, the heads were very low. A lot of disappointed players. Offensive line was the key, Gary. They really talked about pass protection. That's how they're going to get back to have big plays is pass protection. Back to you guys. Okay, well, in fact, let's show you some video right here. And 
the key that you're talking about in the first half as far as the Houston Cougar passing attack and the pressure for the Texas defense. It's been a combination. Man coverage, a little bit of blitz. There you see Brian Jones putting a hit on David right there. And good coverage downfield. You can't get pressure on a quarterback if he's allowed to throw three-step drops. David tries to get out of pressure this time. Rotates back. Whoop, here comes somebody the other way. Let's fall down. The big play now, Kerry Cash. Peter's going to the bottom of your screen. A little hitch pass. A hitch and go on a busted route. Peter finds him downfield. And at the end of the half, when Texas is trying to get a first down, Keith Cash goes all the way and gets him down to the five-yard line. And they get in for another score right before half to make it 28 to 10. Very cool head by Pete Gardere. As you said, he got fooled with the defense, but he didn't throw the pass. And then when he came out, his his uh, veteran player, senior from San Antonio, Keith Cash, took it deep, and that turned out to be very big. Halftime stats. Houston, 9 of 28 throwing. Gardere, 12 of 16, 223 yards. Rushing yardage, and Gary, I think this is huge. 124 yards that, that the Longhorns have been able to keep it on the ground. That also is time of possession. Two points here. Texas throws for 223, which is more than Houston, and runs for enough yard to keep the clock. Let's also look at Weatherspoon. That was the key to the game, I thought. Weatherspoon had 29 yards rushing the ball, and that was much of that was on an option. He caught a couple passes with the, the little shovel pass, but they've kept him in check. Gary, another thing to keep an eye on in the second half. Tracy Good is the leading receiver for Houston with 55 catchers for 484 yards. He didn't have a reception in the first half. Man coverage, pressure defense. They get it in his face. They're not allowing. David Klingler has only completed three passes over 10 yards tonight. He's 7 for 10 under 9 yards, but between 10 and 19, 20 and 29, and 30 plus, He's three for 18. That's good pressure. When you get time and get somebody in his face, he's having to throw strikes down there. There's already somebody there. Roman Anderson to kick it off. Number 23. And we are about ready to get this second half underway. Texas on top by 18. Relatively short. This is going to come down to Samuels at the 13. Out close to the 30-yard line is Pardee is there to make the stop. And if the name sounds familiar, yep, his daddy is the head football coach of the Houston Oilers now. Former head coach with the Houston Cougars. Ted Pardee, a junior out of Houston St. Thomas. And Pete Gardere, who put up some awfully impressive numbers in that first half, comes back on to lead the offense. You know, Ron, in my career, many times I was faced very much like our Jerry. And when I matched up like a Joe Montana or against a Neil Lomax, everybody talked about that guy. But as Gardere, he says, I'm not going to be the short stick around here. I'm going to have a night. I'm not going to let my team down. And he's done it in the first half. Well, he was six of seven in the third or in the second period. Running play, and that goes nowhere. It's Burnett, 88. One of the first men to step in there and uh, make contact on the running play. Also, Jason Youngblood. You can see number 98 getting off the stack. Jason, a sophomore from Mercurio. That's the same town that Willamette Gars is from, and that's the one we talked about. Refugio is spelled R-E-F-U-G-I-O. Probably as mispronounced as any city in Texas, wouldn't you think? I'm glad you're handling those guys. Gardere on the sprint out. Has it complete? It's Keith Cash again. And I'll tell you what, number 11 has been all over this field. One of the matchups tonight that Texas felt very, very positive was their offensive line matched up against the Houston offensive line. You want to know why? They've got a 30-pound advantage. Look at the offense. 6'4", 277 versus 6'1", 247. They feel they can run the ball when they want, and when they want to pass block, they can push and push and push and give Peter time to throw the ball. Keith Cash now five catches, 153 yards. Gardere has the isolation. There's Kerry Cash, the twin brother, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 27-yard line by Jerry Parks. A little bit of a sucker play right here. They're going to fake the pitch to the left side of your screen, and then Peter's going to delay a little bit. The offensive line is going to sell the run play. Offensive line, number 19, the bottom of your screen is going to hit into him a little bit and then loop behind. Peter comes out a little bit on a naked, loops it over, and they got a big play. They're on the 27-yard line again. Boy, the two twins, the two cash twins, they are some weapons. Samuels breaks 
picks off one tackle, takes it inside the 25, and he'll spot him out at the 22. Trey Hooper defensively. You know why Samuels, Chris Samuels, is so valuable? When he's in the backfield, the Houston defense know, doesn't know if he's going to line up as a wide receiver, come out of the backfield as a receiver, or now tonight, he had 61 yards at halftime. With that carry, he's up to 68. So he's keeping by himself, his versatility is keeping the Houston defense off balance. Butch had not over the right side, takes the tackler with him to the 15-yard line. That's McCoy, the freshman from Beaumont. And that is a Texas first down. Well, the two freshmen end up meeting here, but watch Butch Hadnot. He's as good as reading the block, and he runs, he bounces, he jumps to his right, and he's under the linebackers, and there's the two freshmen guys. They're going to meet, but push, push, push. A very successful play first and 10 again. the 10 he's down to the seven Jerry Parks comes up from his free safety position Chuck Johnson with a good block to pave the way there you see him signal them in the two guys that are standing in the way right there the backup quarterbacks are blocking the signals from the opposite sideline so nobody can steal them Troy Kokomore as you look across the way at Larry Coyer the defensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars Pollock makes it 35, Texas to 10. One of the things that's happened all day is they've been running the pitch wide. This time, the left guard and left tackle come down right here, and they're going to block. And Hadnot does a nice job of reading the blocking again and coming behind the blocks. Now watch him. Tell me, Ron, if he doesn't look like Earl Campbell on this one. Takes the defensive guy in and pushes. That's vintage Earl Campbell right there, running into the end zone, running over whatever he has to, to score that touchdown. Three of them for the freshman tonight. The Longhorn fans are enjoying it right now with 12.45 left in the third period. You know, at halftime, John Jenkins said, you know, we're three scores away from getting a lead in this game. But that's exactly what he did not want to happen, is Texas to come out and not get a stop from his defense the first series. And now he's looking at being behind 25 points. Trey Hooper, defensive tackle for the Houston Cougars, getting a breather on the far side. Three touchdowns for Hadnot. That is a career high for the freshman. <laughs> Pollock's pick is going to come down to good at the six. They fake the reverse, good to the outside, and Tubbs will knock him out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Coming up tomorrow here on ESPN, it all starts at noon Eastern Time game day with uh, Chris Berman and the guys and then the NFL primetime at 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow evening. And then immediately following that, it is the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann up in Dallas. Well, David Klingler is being talked about being a Heisman candidate. And if he can pull this game out tonight, he's going to win the Heisman Trophy, I'll predict. Because if he brings it behind 35-10, there's going to be a lot of people see a great, fantastic comeback. Throws it back, and the hit. That's the first catch for Tracy Good tonight as Cadmus came up and stuck him pretty good. He's a sophomore from Willow Ridge. 
Jonas is doing what the Texas defensive backs have been doing all night. If someone catches the ball, they've been coming up, wrapping up, and making the tackle. No big plays after the catch. No, you're not going to stop everyone every time. They're going to catch the ball. But let's tackle the guy and let's make it second and five, six, seven, and eight. They've been successful with it. The ball tipped at the last moment by Gunn, and if he catches it, he's gone for the distance. We're going to ice a win on Manny Hazard for this time. We've got a replay of him going up the hash. This time it's a little bit of a man coverage, outside technique. There he is, right down the hash. Let's see if Gunn gets his hand on this. No, he doesn't, but shields him enough. Manny, if he catches that one, it changes the scoreboard seven points. Houston. Nice throw by David right there. Houston, 4 of 12 and third down conversions. They need the 35-yard line. Over the middle, knocked down, almost intercepted by Cadmus. are playing outside technique and they're trying to force the throw into Gunn. When the ball is thrown, Gunn is able to read the quarterback. See him down the seams. Klinger with a nice look off. The cabinet breaks inside. It could have intercepted the pass. Langston's punt. This, this one doesn't turn over and is now going to take a Houston bounce and comes down out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Texas, 35 to 10. We'll be right back. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Houston versus Texas, is brought to you by GMAC, helping America put GM quality on the road. And by Campbell's Chunky Soup, the satisfying stop that keeps you going. That's a shot down at the concession stand. People loading up on the dogs and the, uh, the soft drinks. And I'll tell you, with run and shoot offense, Houston plays games that are four hours long sometimes. You need that added nourishment. The concessionaires love these games. Bill, sales Bill Brown is knocked down by Trey Hooper. Broke the initial tackle, then uh, winds up with a gain of a couple. You know, guard there, maybe the, the situation, the night and the big crowd, uh, you know, added to extra butterflies because he got off to a slow start. One of four, one interception for seven yards and since then has thrown 13 of 14, 260 yards. Oh. I'd say that's being hot. Clark, the tight end, close to the first down as McCoy knocks him out of bounds, and from where they have spotted it, it would appear that he has it. Peter is in such control of himself right now. He's not trying to force anything. Of course, with a 25-point lead, he doesn't have to. And I'm sure that's what Lynn Amity has told him. Let's not fall in love with the deep pass. Let's move the chains. Lynn said our offense is a five-yard offense. Five yards at a time is our goal. If this were a basketball game, we would be talking about the tempo and who it's in favor of. And the tempo is in favor of Texas. No doubt about it. They've been able to control the line of scrimmage with the bigger offensive line. And their running backs have been all four of them have been so successful tonight that they've kept the Houston defense off balance. Walker, Brown, Hadnut, Samuels. That was Walker for three. You know, Ron, I hate to say it, but before those people start calling anymore 900, maybe there's a, a 900 number you can call in and, and, and vote for somebody that's not on the list because if Texas wins this game uh, 45 to 10 or 50 to 17, they're going to move up to the top five in the country, I'll predict, in the voting come Monday. This is an impressive victory if they can hold on and finish a game that they're in total control of right now. 10-50, left third period. Now Gardier turns to Wendell Sheldon, the referee, and says, I want a timeout.
let's go down to Neil Lomax, who is on the Houston side of the field right now. Well, both Coach John Jenkins and Klinger have been over here trying to boost up morale with the slot backs, the inside receivers, outside receivers. If they're going to come back, Ron and Gary, win this football game, these gentlemen right here on this bench got to start catching the passes. And Mr. Klingler has got to start throwing those balls to him and complete them because he's had a horrendous, really, a second half right now. Back up to you guys. Well, Ron, you know, that's what sometimes is so, you know, the, the Heisman Trophy is a stat award. And that's what's so hard sometimes because as a quarterback, you're depending on five offensive linemen to give you time to throw the ball. Tonight, David has not had time to do the thing he does best, is throw the ball on timing. And that's sometimes when you get, you get looking at these stats, you got to have matchups and take advantage of them. No one can throw the ball when you're backpedaling all night and not being able to set and throw a pass. David McWilliams, as he said just at the end of the first half to Neil Lomax, was that Texas was not going to try to junk up their defense, that he thought that a lot of teams made a mistake of doing that and doing something they were not familiar with. So far, it has worked extremely well. And subtly, what he told his team is, I believe in you. I don't have to change or trick up anything. I think you guys are good enough to win the game with what we're doing already. Flag goes down. Adrian Walker takes it for the first down, but that marker is thrown by the umpire. That could be offensive holding. Hooper and Blunt in the tackle, and that's what it's going to be, holding against the Longhorns. Texas offensive line has done a great job tonight, both pass blocking and push blocking on the runs, and they have had very few penalties. Holding by the offense. Repeat, second down. Let's see if we can find the middle of the screen here and see if we can see who held on it. Can't really tell. Obviously, somebody saw it. Referee threw it right in it, very emphatically threw it into the middle of the pile. And this is in pro football. They don't have to name anybody, so we'll just assume. We'll give it a team hold on that one. <laughs> line to make is the Houston 49-yard line with a second down. Johnson makes the stop on him, and Texas comes close to picking back up the initial line of scrimmage, and now it's going to be third down. You know what's so impressive about Peter Gardier is last week, he started out 0 for 6 and ended up 14 for 27. He's very much in control of his emotions. You know, all week he had to hear about David Klingler. He knew everybody was looking at him, can you match up? Well, he didn't think he could match up statistically, but he has tonight. A career high, 284 yards passing. Houston shows blitz. They come with it. Pass is almost intercepted by Parks. Stephen Clark was the intended receiver. They came with the safety blitz. Peter was ready to throw it long before Clark looked. I think Clark misread it. He has to break it off. That was too long to stand and wait on a safety blitz. Alex waits and look who is back in single safety. Chuck Weatherspoon, the fullback. How many fullbacks do you see returning punts? Get his hands on the ball, just like the, the rocket. Bounces straight in the air, and now is going to go dead around the 26-yard line. So let's take a timeout. Texas 35 and Houston 10. The Dodge NIT, the 19th. College basketball season tips off at ESPN. Boy, what a great deal. Marquette at Duke, Vanderbilt at Arkansas. That's the opening night doubleheader. Klingler throws it back, complete, and the tackle made by Kavnis as soon as the ball was there. Tracy Good on the receiving end. gain of about six yards in the play. Second down and around four. There you see John Jacobs, even though they go without a huddle, he signals the plays in. Drop play to Weatherspoon. 
hit down Anthony Curl, blasting to the turf at the 34-yard line. And it's going to be third down Houston, and they need the 36-yard line. When we talked to David McWilliams, he said Anthony Curl was so valuable because he's 202 pounds but plays like a linebacker can cover people. Look at that. Last four drives, 12 yards. Whoa. Run and shoot, wishbone, doesn't really matter what kind of defense. If you can't block, you're in trouble. When you get outmanned by the front five, you have problems. Langler drops the football. He makes the recovery, but Houston will have to punt again. Carl and Jeter were there. Langston in to punt. Again, it's Chris Samuels as the defect. Four kicks for an average of 45 yards per boot. Samuels breaks it outside. And he is to the 47-yard line. Newhouse was there to make the tackle. Chris Samuels is having a game he's going to remember the rest of his life. This time he's on the punt return. Goes left. Reads it. Most of this he's doing by himself right now. Cuts back. He's got feet that can go right, left, accelerate, stop, go the other way. That's why he's so tough to cover coming out of the backfield. This guy, could, this guy could be a sleeper playing on Sunday next year, Ron. He's a very so. valuable you're, player. You're big enough? Hey, if you can get open, you're big enough. Looks coming from Houston as flags come down. Looks as though procedure will be called against the Longhorns. I go back to the point that we made just a bit ago. That's it. Procedure against Texas. And that is tempo of the ball game. As David McWilliams continues to pace in the sideline, his Longhorns leading it by 25 points but the tempo of the game since Houston has gotten the ball and had to punt twice already in the third period it is uncharacteristic of what the the Cougar offense has to face and the tempo has been with Texas it's just like a basketball game they have controlled the tempo it's to their advantage Terry Cash the 45-yard line of Houston. Daniel Johnson is there defensively. Short of the first down by about two. When we visited with Lynn Amity on Thursday before practice, he just could not stop talking about all the weapons he had on offense. This time it's Kerry Cash. Gardier's going to fake a little bootleg action. He rolls to his left and he looks for the big tight end. What a target. Six foot four, puts it in his stomach. That guy's not going to get knocked down by those little defensive backs without falling forward. Hand out of the carry. Breaks it open. Has the first down. Has five more. Has ten more. He's at 25. Huh. Wow. I have not seen a running back accelerate through a secondary guy since Earl Campbell like Hadnot is right now. Those four defensive backs have got a problem. Left side of the line makes this go right here, though. Look at his head here. <laughs> He's, got He's got red, red all, all over, over him. Over. That's what uh, is his weapon. Chris Samuels on the right side of your screen ties up Burnett. Hadnot reads it. He breaks back. Let's salute Todd Smith, the center, number 50, number 53. But he accelerates when someone comes to make the tackle. Like the big Earl. Hadnot goes for three, maybe four yards. It's Reggie Burnett, the senior from Rayville, Louisiana, who is there to make the stop for the Houston Cougars. You know, this Houston defense is a young defense, and they're going to get better next year and the year after. They're going to be a much improved team. But the Texas offense is hitting on all cylinders tonight. They're using four backs. They're using four receivers. And that would be a problem for any defense, not just a young injured defense that Larry Coyer is going to have to try to make better as the years go on. Well, what was it the damage he said he told the offense? He said, guys, the defense has saved us twice this year. This week, it's your turn. Had not. Breaks it open at the 10, at the 5, to the 1. Had Chris not. Sam 
Samuels again. The offensive line is pushing Ron. Chris Samuels fits into somebody, and hand not breaks in. And Ron, this has to remind you of the great Earl Campbell. He accelerates through those defensive backs. Those guys get tired of seeing a big fullback come in full speed like that. He just went over 100 yards with that. He's the first Texas back to go over 100 yards this season. Gets the hand off, and he is not going to get in the end zone this time. Stop as Jason Youngblood is down at the bottom of the pile, along with Carlos Leon. In college football this year, Robert Smith, the great tailback from Ohio State, has been getting a lot of press as the top freshman running back. But I believe Haddon right now is opening a lot of eyes. And he says, move over, move over. I'm the man. Move over, Robert Smith. 16 carries, 107 yards, and three touchdowns for Haddon. Clock runs with 5-10 left in the third period. The Longhorns with a second down and goal, less than a yard away. Stop short of the goal line again as the Houston defense rises up, and that's Eric Blunt down at the bottom along with Trey Hooper. You can see how close that football is. The nose right on the edge, not quite to the line. Defensive coordinator Larry Coyer said his Houston defense, his young players, would never give up. They were going to play all night. They would attack, attack, and do the best they could. They'd hang on and play the toughest game all the way. He said he's never seen a defensive group work as hard as these guys. Adnott doesn't get in. Daniel Johnson is in there somewhere, and he made the hit. You can see the frustration by Stephen Clark. And now the crowd turning to coaching. They say go for it on fourth down. Here you see the short yardage play. Samuels and number 23 and 11. And there you see Hannah. The, the hit comes in from off the quarterback corner. Daniel Johnson gets him in the backfield. Stopped him before he got into his lead. Before he could get it. Big decision here. Should they go for it or not? A field goal puts him up by 28 points. Fourth down. Crowd will touch. Chris Samuels takes it in. Puts him up by 32, and he went for the touchdown. Going to kick a replay on this. They have been successful short yardage. Give the credit to the offensive line. Score with your defensive man. Push, push, push. This time, had not provides the block. He scores first, and then they put the seven points in behind him. Chris Samuels finds it. Michael Pollock, the senior from Austin, puts it down, and the smoky sounds again. 42 for Texas and 10 for the Houston Cougars, the number three ranked team of the nation. Well, speaking of rankings, let's take a look at the top 10 and who is number one. Well, this is what has happened today. Notre Dame came from behind and won over a good Tennessee team in Knoxville. Washington was upset by UCLA. The Cougars, jury is still out on this one, but getting closer. Colorado defeated Oklahoma State. Miami Idol this week. Now for the next five, it's Iowa losing to Ohio State. They're 7-2. Georgia Tech, and I mean, Squeak barely five. wins over Virginia Tech. BYU won handily over Wyoming. Tennessee lost to Notre Dame. And Florida won in uh, the big tea party down with, in Jacksonville. With every stop the Texas defense provides, there you see Brick Bruce with a big night. And every touchdown they score, Texas passes another team. They're at number six right now. They're moving to number five with that last touchdown. Let's see who else they could pass tonight. Butch Hadnot. Caught at the six-yard line by Cody Smith. Up the middle, breaks it open at the 25, and now out to the 32-yard line. 
And let's go down to Neal. He's in the picnic area, understand. Yeah, guys, you know, I told you, uh, running shoot would score a lot of points, but it's actually Texas and Peter Gardier that's putting on a good impersonation of running shoot. This game, guys, is almost three hours old already. I'm getting, I'm going to have my own little Texas barbecue. I got some nachos, jalapenos, some popcorn, peanuts. I'm waiting on some hot dogs. I ordered some. Hey, where, where's my hot dogs, guys? Hey, it's going to be a long one. It usually takes about three and a half hours for Houston to play, but right now Texas is doing a great job. I'm going to start eating some of this stuff. We've got the good assignment tonight. <laughs> Weatherspoon hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's Oscar Giles, number 95, who is there defensively for the Longhorns. Houston tries to cross up the horns on first down and runs the fullback for no gain. Going long, far sideline overthrow. Willie Mack Garza had the cover over there. A number 81, Marcus Grant, the sophomore from Dallas Carter. Good coverage by Willie Mack. David has to keep that ball in the playing field, though. You know, you're not going to complete a lot of passes throwing them outside the down marker. You've got to give your receiver a chance to catch the ball. Keep it within the down markers. 11 for 33 now. 496 yards total offense for Texas. Wayne Lurie, 11 of 33, two touchdowns, or two interceptions, 164 yards. Zings it incomplete. Craig Alexander was the intended receiver, and that's the position you were talking about that you can't throw for. Hard to throw horizontal, that's for sure. It was Oscar Giles who was pressuring him, and Langston comes in to punt again. Number 95, Oscar Giles right here is going to go around. He beats him to the outside, the spin move inside, and David understands every pass he's thrown tonight, he's gotten knocked down after he's thrown the ball. That plays on your mind. It quickens your tempo. You throw a little bit sooner than you want to because you feel that rush all night. off the side of his foot and that goes out of bounds at the 44 yard line let's take a break we'll be right back thank you good Sunday night NFL, the San Francisco 49ers face the Dallas Cowboys. The San Francisco 49ers, the undefeated world champions drive toward their third consecutive title, led by perhaps the most awesome offense ever. The Dallas Cowboys have upset on their mind as they strive to ruin the 49ers' perfect season. The 49ers face the Cowboys live at 8 Eastern on ESPN Sunday night NFL. Well, don't miss it. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the defending world champions, San Francisco 49ers in Dallas against Jimmy Johnson's Dallas Cowboys. Our situation, 258, left in the third. Texas, 42 to 10 over Houston. Gardier, quick pass, has it complete to tight end Stephen Clark. Jerry Parks makes the tackle. So nice to be in control like this. You know if you dial a run, it works. You know if you dial a play action pass, it works. You just drop back, you just look to the side like, Coach, what play am I going to win with this time? On the opposite side, you can't dial anything. Coaches look around, he looks down his game plan. Listen, we can't block him, we can't stop him. I can't dial any defenses. I can't help you guys, you're on your own. Bill Brown. He breaks the tackle and takes it to the 36-yard line as Daniel Johnson had to come up from a strong safety position. I get the feeling right now like the Texas offense and defense, they're like sharks and you know, they smell blood. They're in a feeding frenzy. They just want the ball. They want to get both teams. They want to get back out of the field. I bet the defense is standing up there by the line. They just keep building and building. Look at the numbers. I know the Houston guys. I mean, I'm glad that numbers aren't on the board. They're embarrassed by this. They've had a great year, and now they've got to suffer through this type of a game. Counteraction. That'll go for a couple of yards as Ryan McCoy steps up to make the hit along with Blunt. Let's not 
take this as any indictment against the run and shoot. Run. The run and shoot has its merits. You still personnel. You've got to have the players. You know, John Jenkins knows that. This was a little bit of a surprise year for him this year. Reggie Burnett is walk going out there, big linebacker. That put that ankle. They've only got ten guys on the field also. Jardier throws it complete to Clark at the 31-yard line. I think they got the 11th thought, I believe. Did they get 11? Yeah. They need 12. I did a quick count. They need 12, though, Rod. That's the only problem tonight. Burnett injured the ankle, only worked out one day this week. He is described as the heart and soul of that Houston defense. On the sideline right now, the Texas players are saying, remember the last years, how they were scored and scored on us. We want to keep ringing up that scoreboard like a cash register. Let's keep putting it on, putting points on the board. Chad McMillan, number 77, is coming at right guard, replacing Jeff Boyd. Jardere going to do it himself. Steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Tracy Gentry ran him out, but that's enough for the Texas first down. We asked offensive coordinator Lynn Amity, what were some of the problems? What did Peter Gardere do wrong when he wasn't playing well? He said occasionally he fell in love with trying to throw the ball to Walker because he's so explosive. When he reads out his game plan and does it properly, he has been very effective this year. You can see, judged by tonight, he doesn't make the big mistakes. Houston comes with the blitz, and the man who picks it up is the running back. That's, I, that's the thing that I remember so well is when the running back gets the ball, and he's the one that picks up the blitz. Right. Boy, he got belted. When you got a block with the ball, it's not a <laughs> successful play. You know, Texas is now, I mean, Houston is now selling out. They're bringing eight, nine people on the rush, and if you pop it through the line right now, you're into the secondary, no one's going to catch you because they're playing man in the secondary. Any running play that breaks the line of scrimmage is going to score. Just whistled in. That should be the last play of the third period, and Texas is not going to press the issue. Gardier unsnaps the headgear. It comes over as the four fingers go in the air. That's the end of the third period with our score. Texas 42 and Houston 10. Here. Gardere looks long, incomplete, Mike Davis. Let's go back to the 900 number. Who is number one? You call and give us your opinion. There it is, 900, 786-2255. Notre Dame with 32% right now. Colorado right behind at 31. 95 cents per call. There's the 900 number. Ring it up. Gardier with a third down and 10 from the Houston 23 and a half yard line. Incomplete. As the receivers kind of ran together down there and Michael Pollock will come on to attempt the field goal. This one in the vicinity of 40 yards. Pollock, 15 of 18 on the season. He missed earlier in the ball game. Mark Murdoch will hold Michael Pollock to attempt a 40-yard Out of the hold of Mark Murdoch. at 35, meaning five touchdowns, and they're also going to have to go for two in the fourth quarter. I don't even think the run and shoot can do that. Let's go down to Neil Lomax on the sideline for an injury update. All right, guys, for an injury update, Todd Smith, the center for Texas, is taken in the locker room to get x-rays on his ribs. But the big story really is Reggie Burnett, who came into this game, guys, with 12 sacks. He's been working out there all game long with almost like a broken ankle. But he's been hanging in there. He's told me that it doesn't feel too good, but he's going to continue to play. That's the story from down here, guys. 14-46 left in the ball game. Texas leading 45-10.
you know, Reggie staying in there and hanging in there with that angle. With the score, 45 to 10, a lot of guys would be checking it over to the bench and just uh, saying, I can't go anymore. you got to salute a guy like that. He's out there playing. He's going to finish with his guys, his teammates, and finish out the game. That's why this Houston team is going to be so tough to deal with in the future. Pollock kicks it off. Cody Smith at the goal line oh steps no. back out of the field, oh and no. that is a touchback. Well, that could be a safety. Whoa. Let's check this one on instant replay here. you need some help from your teammates. Somebody's got to say you're in the end zone. If both feet come out. Let's take a peek right here. He catches the ball. He comes out. No, he never got both feet out of the end zone. A proper call. Yep. Both feet did not come out of the end zone, and that's the reason for the you touchback. Know, you know what, though? He's fortunate because he didn't know if both feet came out. <laughs> As he get hit as the pass is completed to Hazard. As Klingler is down at the 13-yard line. He really took a shot from Bo Robinson. Bo Robinson's going to come, number 45, around the outside. He's going to beat number 79, Leroy Truitt. He's got to run at David now, and he never breaks stride. You know, run and shoot, when you throw the ball every game, 50 times every game, you take so many hits through the course of the game. They haven't given David the short ones. Look, he's got cuts on his arm, elbows, but he's going to finish it out. He's tough. He's got to tell his team, we're going to finish on the field together. Weatherspoon. Sneed, the first guy to hit him. Then came Jones. Let's take a look at possessions in this ball game. Since the second quarter field goal, and if you count one, two, three, four, five of three downs and out, I can't remember the last time that the University of Houston had that kind of situation where three downs and out. I, 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 will, I will say in the last two years, they have never had that type of a situation. Drills it complete for the first down. And it is caught at the 35 and 89. Craig Alexander, the junior from Jacksonville, moves it out to the 37. Van Malone there defensively for the Longhorns. Nice timing on this one. David steps back, gets a little protection, and rips it out there. First, first down since the second, the quarter. second quarter. over the middle, complete to Hazard. In the open field, breaks off one tackle and then takes it across the field. And let's go to Tim Brando. Well, for those of you that are raking leaves and aren't uh, are living in closets, look at this. Notre Dame beats Tennessee 34-29, and Penn State a winner today over Maryland. Final score 24-10. You'll see Penn State, Notre Dame at 4 p.m. Eastern time next week. By the way, Penn State out of the picture in the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, guys. As Don Myers told us at halftime, the out for them could be the Blockbuster Bowl. They didn't want to play Texas in the Cotton Bowl, and that was part of the mix with the Fiesta. Back to you guys. Situation 12:35 left in the ball game. Texas 45 to 10. Klingler going to take it to the outside. Picks up the first down and steps out of bounds at the 35. Klingler again with his ability to just get out of the pocket. Rushing has been his big forte tonight. Eight for 41 yards. For 41 him. yards rushing. You know, John Jenkins has said, you really can't stop this offense, but you can with a pass rush. You can stop any pass offense with a pass rush. And that's been the story of the game so far.
Double pass incomplete. Sheen Dramet was all over Klingler, and one of the reasons it was incomplete. Dramet's the young man who had five sacks against Texas Tech just last week. This time it's going to be the shuffle pass near side. Number 81, Shane Drunn at the bottom of the screen. He comes up. They're going to let him go. That's part of the play to let him go, but he keeps going and throws him on the ground again. That's what you got to do. Like a body butt puncher in a box, it just keeps throwing him down and throwing him down. It adds on to the wear and tear. Second and ten. Incomplete. Tracy Good was looking where he was going to run before he caught it. Texas bringing in a couple of fresh defensive tackles as Tommy Jeter comes back in and also Todd Hunt, a sophomore from Richardson. When you watch the run and shoot on film, that's what you usually see 10, 12, 15, 20 times a game even, those short pop passes to the outside when the rush doesn't even have a chance. Texas has taken away that play from the run and shoot tonight. Third down. Cougars need the 25. Pass is caught at the 14-yard line, and Klingler got belted again by, this time, Oscar Giles. Good for 23 yards on the completion. Boy, Gary, how many hits like that can he take? You want to play big-time college football and you want to play quarterback? This is what it's like. You drop back, you let it go, you get a completion. But believe me, you just got run over by a guy that weighs 6'3", 246. You know what David did? He got up, got in the huddle, and called another play. Bravo. Ninth play of the drive coming up. You don't get any hit any harder than that. And walk away from it. Caught at the eight-yard line. Ball is fumbled, and let's see. Texas says they have it. No signal from the official. They're going to call him down, it looks like. They're going to call him down at the six-yard line. Brian Jones made the hit. Patrick Cooper is going to get the catch here. Nice throw underneath the rush. Cooper goes up, turns in, gets hit. Should have been a fumble. Brady Cavanis gets on the ball and gets it. But it should have been a fumble. Hey, Houston deserves a break. Pass incomplete. Just as Garza turned around, Roland Brown had the ball coming at him and he couldn't hold on. Take a look at this as far as the quick strikes. The number of times, like under 30 seconds, Houston has scored eight times this year. Eight more times in 59 seconds or left. Less and a minute and a half, 12 times this season. I've never seen a stat like that in watching pro or college football as long as I've been watching football. Great stat, guys. play. Weatherspoon will score. Number 28. Weatherspoon scores, but let's give credit to Klingler here. They're going to have to even go for two. He fought him all the way down the field. He got hit, and he got hit, and then he runs the option on the goal line to get him through. David, great job. You know, he's not even only making a mark tonight. They may not win this football game, but believe me, everybody on this football team is keeping their eyes on this guy, a leader for next year, and saying, you know, if David can play with this type of pressure, we got to be able to play when we're behind. Anybody can play when they're ahead. He's showing he can play when the game is out of reach. Houston will go for a pair. Down 45 to 16. Did he get in? Yes. Giles and Dronette were hot after him. Take another look at it. First, the two-point conversion. He's going to drop back, rolls to his left. He's got the fade. He doesn't think he can get it in. Now it's a sprint. He dives and reaches the ball out. All you got to do is get it across the pylon. Nice play right there. Now the touchdown. Option to the left. He reads it. Giles comes in, pitches it back. You're walking in. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Houston versus Texas, is brought to you by Howard Johnson. 
Where are you going this fall? Well, go anywhere and get it on the fall sale at Howard Johnson. Call 1-800-I-GO-HOJO. And by Thrifty Car Rental. Because it's your money, call 1-800-FOR-CARS or your travel consultant. Ron Franklin, Gary Danielson here at the Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. And 11.02 left to play in the ballgame. Texas 45 and Houston 18 as the Longhorns put out the good hands team. They are looking for the onside kick. Two deep men, but uh, Walker and Samuels have only dropped off to around the 20-yard line. And you see the nine players, lots of linebackers and receivers and defensive backs in that five-yard barrier between the 45 and the 50-yard line. Anderson kicks it away. Adrian Walker. Knocked out at the 26-yard line. Let's go for another update with Tim Brando. Tim. Ron, we're still bowling for dollars. Despite the scores we're about to show you, Stanford leading Arizona 14-10. to 10. There you see it at the half. And Tulane knocking off Syracuse today, 26-24. to 24. Marcia Turner, who is the bowl chairman of the Aloha Bowl, has confirmed for us that these two teams are still the front runners. Now, Syracuse is 5-3-2. and two. If Arizona were to lose, they would be 6-4. and four. Syracuse still has West Virginia next week. According to Turner, they better win if they want to be where the grass skirts are on Christmas Day. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. That's plenty of good setup. Option play by Gardeer. Bill Brown turns the corner out close to the 29-yard line. And you'll see Texas, if they can, continue to run the football. They have all night this evening. Really try to keep it on there right now. Just take time off the clock. Texas using to great advantage, Adrian Walker, Phil Brown, Chris Samuels, and of course, Butch Hadnot, the freshman out of Kirbyville, Texas, who has three touchdowns on the evening. Brown hit as soon as he gets the football. That is Eric Blunt. And let's go down to Neil Lomax on the sideline. Neil. Well, Gary, what we were seeing earlier was so true. I am really, really impressed with Klingler's performance. I know he doesn't have the numbers that he would like or the score, but this kid is hanging in there. As you mentioned, he's taking a lot of shots. Physically, he's just beat up, but he's coming over here, and he has his hand in his house. Hey, let's go get him, guys. Let's go get him. I'll tell you what, you, both you and I have been in this situation, but down by three or four touchdowns. This guy's really hanging in there. I'm really impressed with this young man. Back to you guys. Third down at 11 for Texas, and the guy taking the snap right here, has also distinguished himself tonight, hasn't he? Gardeer running for his life. Perry Cash at the 25, and he'll score. And a marker is down back at the line of scrimmage. He may have passed the line of scrimmage, but I don't what think a play. so. The comeback block. I don't know if they're going to call clipping or what, but it's thrown right in the vicinity where a lineman came back to help pick up a block. Don't yep. be, you're right. They're going to say he's beyond the line of scrimmage. It was so close. He escaped the rush so well. That was the tight end, gentlemen. But he that went down there and beat it for the touchdown. Let's check and see if he's over. Watch. He feels the pressure. Now he spins out to the right side. Now he's running. Now should he run, pass, run, pass? Oh, there's the tight end for the touchdown. The ball was spotted in behind the 25-yard line. He threw the ball right at the 25. The ball was thrown beyond the line. Five-yard penalty and loss of down. It'll be fourth down. So Gardeer, that's a loss of down because of the illegal forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. You know, in the past, you could go beyond the line of scrimmage and then come back and throw the football. You can't do that anymore as of this year. He did make a great play escaping out of the rush, though, and finding someone downfield. When he scrambles, he just doesn't run. He looks, finds somebody, and the receivers cash did a great job of breaking his route again. Weatherspoon, the deep man out of bounds as he crosses the 40-yard line. Let's take a timeout. <laughs> Texas 45, Houston 18, 902 left to play in the ball game.
Klingler goes up top, and it is intercepted by Gunn at the five-yard line. Defensive coordinator for the Texas Longhorns has got to be very, very pleased with the effort of his youngsters tonight. Lance Gunn has been playing center field all the time. You see him just go out of your camera on the bottom in the middle. But he reads his eyes. He's playing center field now. Run back, get the fly ball. Nice catch, Lance. Way to go back and get it. Yep, pop up. He Second interception it. for him tonight. They've had five turnovers now, Houston. Three interceptions and two fumbles. Had not back of the ball game. He takes it for a couple on the left side. Trey Hooper defensively. As we take a look at the storyline and what has it been here in Austin tonight. Had not 107 yards, three touchdowns. Klingler only 16 of 43 for 228. That's a season low for him. The total yards, U of H 306, Texas 530. And folks, take a look at time of possession. I talked about tempo in the ball game. There is your tempo right there. And one of the reasons that the run and shoot has had problems getting off the ground tonight. Chris Samuel spins off one tackler and brings it out to the nine. It's going to be third down as Allen Aldridge is there defensively. Allen is a freshman out of Missouri City. This Houston defense, though, they're playing, they're flying, they're running to the ball. They're going to finish the game. They're taking it from their leader, David Klingler. He's not going to quit. These guys can't quit. They're going to run, 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 and go. You know, David has had his season lows tonight, and he came in with unbelievable yards, 3,009, whatever, how many yards, and he was a, a leader for the Heisman candidate. But I believe me, I'm more impressed with what a guy does in a losing effort like this than all the front-running touchdowns he's throw coming into this tonight he shows he can play Longhorns with a third down they need the 15 yard line Gardere whips the pass almost intercepted by Daniel Johnson oh my goodness <laughs> Keith Cash the intended receiver and Gardere, if you hear a noise, it sounds like a drum beat. That's probably his heart. <laughs> and it's happened to all of us. We're throwing that flat pass. If you don't get it out in front of somebody, you can chase the scoreboard fast. Alex Waits, his longest kick of the night, 47. He's averaging just over 36 per kick. Well, the 25-second clock still had 16 seconds, so undoubtedly we're going to have some kind of procedure here. Dead ball, false start, offense, still fourth down. Ron, I think this is just pointing out why points are so, in, so important in these type of games. You know, it's 45-18. If it was 28-18ers, I mean, everybody would still be holding their breath. You have to score and score and score because Klingler is just liable to throw one 75 yards and score in eight seconds again the next time he gets the ball. Weatherspoon for the 47. Flags come down and a clip is going to be called. Higgins is there defensively. He's had a good special teams night. That's about the third time that we've called his name. 42 yards in the kick, 10 on the return, and I think the University of Houston is going to take a walk back. another update. Here is Mr. Brando. Timmy. All right, Ron, a Southwest Conference wrap-up here. Texas Tech beats TCU. They were 5-1, and one, the Horned Frogs. They're now 5-4. and four. That diminishes their bowl hopes drastically. SMU uh, losing to Rice. Rice could go 6-5 and five if they win next week. And Baylor beats Arkansas by a score of 34-3. They're 5-3-1. and one. If they don't go Cotton, they could go to the Independence Bowl. Wengler sets in the pocket, goes up top. And that one is by Stanley Richard. Back-to-back -back passes. The Texas 
secondary has picked up off David Klingworth here in the fourth quarter. Richards, number 18, is actually covering the inside player, but when he sees the ball in the, in the air, he goes for the ball. That's the ability to play free safety. He's been playing it all year. He's covering one man. He looks back. He sees the ball, and he reacts to it when it was in the air. David hung that one a little bit, and Staley reacted to it and went and got it. Once the ball's in the, rear, in the air, your defensive backs have to become receivers and go grab it. He made a statement about Richard early. You think that he has really improved his stock as far as the throw. Adrian Walker takes it for six, now seven yards. No doubt about it, Ron. In the pro game, if you can have a safety that can play man-to-man -man coverage, he's so valuable because so many of the teams in the pro game now are going to four wideouts, three wideouts, and you have matchup problems all the time. So a guy like Richard, I mean, he's just moving up the draft order with every one of these plays. Stanley is just having a, some night tonight. You know, not just tonight, though. He's had it all night. That's is Mark, that Mark Berry? Mark Berry has his arm in a sling. <laughs> Willie Mac Garza has done an excellent job replacing him as Butch Hadnock takes it for the Texas first down. And let's go back to Neil Lomax for an update from the sideline. Well, it's funny, the last series, Stan Richards was out with a bruised knee during the run. He told me, I want to get back to Epton and get me intercepts. These guys got cotton on their mind. <laughs> back upstairs. <laughs> Texas leading 45 to 18 as the clock runs with six minutes and 19 seconds to play. Longhorns, after this evening, have TCU next week. Then they have the Bader Bears and then Texas A&M. They still got a tough road to hole in conference play. Uh-oh, two men in motion. That's a little different. <laughs> That'll work north of the border, but not down here. It's had not. Brings it out of bounds around the 35, but that one will go back in Texas will have five yards stepped off against them. <laughs> Two men moving at the same time. Gary, we, while they decide to get this one all worked out, we've got an interesting Whoa. one next week up in uh, South Bend, Penn State. After a slow start and a couple of losses. Can't say enough about Notre Dame. Going into Tennessee. Tennessee's been pointing for that That's game right. for all year. And they go right in there, score 14 fourth quarter points to steal that game. Gets 95,000 people and a good football team, too. And you and I have been up there and seen that shit. That is a tough place to play. Well, Notre Dame has some advantage in that situation. They I play a shift by the offense. Two men moving at the same time. It's still first down. Let's take a look at this. This is the idea. This is where you really can gain an advantage right here. You got this guy's going in motion this way, and it had not's going to go in motion this way. But he realizes it, and he's going to see at the same time. He looks around, and he sees Walker going in motion. He goes, uh-oh, either he's wrong or I'm wrong. It's probably me. I'm the freshman, so I better stop here. Had not gets the ball and takes it to the 27. Ryan McCoy is there defensively for the Houston Cougars. Picked Butch, up the five-yard penalty and one more. Butch Hadnot hasn't done much else wrong tonight, though. He has been running that ball. I'm sure he's happy with his offensive line. I mean, he's, they've just provided all the push all night, but he can turn it up. To show you how Texas has distributed the wealth this season, I was surprised. I didn't realize, I guess, that, uh, that Texas had not had a running back and had gone over 100 yards this year. He's the first. He had 97 yards versus SMU, but that's been the most. Here comes the blitz again. 25 second clock had run out. And the Longhorns are going to walk back and lose that five yards again. This is a situation when people are saying, why are you throwing here? You've got a big lead. Let's check out the penalty first. There was no play. The 25 second clock expired before the snap. Delay of the game offense. But in reality, Ron, sometimes the defense offers you no other alternative but to throw. They're putting eight men up there. They're blitzing. They're taking away all the gaps. They're playing off, playing one-on-one. -on -one. You're just trying to make first downs. You throw it out there and move it. It's just like long handoffs. Here's Leon Fuller with the white cap on. He feels better today than he did Thursday and Friday, doesn't he? <laughs> he was a nervous wreck. Here it is again. Here they all come. Gardner calls the audible. Pass is thrown complete to Johnny Walker. 
breaks off the tackle, and I believe, yes, he has the first down. Well, as they move the chains, let's talk about the Heisman. What did these gentlemen do today? Well, Ismail, 44 yards rushing, 43 receiving, 44 returns. So all-purpose yards, you see what he's done yeah, on well, the we, year. Well, you know, we've seen the rocket against Pitt. He can really turn it on when he gets the ball. But they bottled him up a little bit, Tennessee. That's a pretty good job against them. Moore, 2,153 yards, 21 touchdowns, six interceptions. Boy, they had not had that illegal procedure penalty, and they got that touchdown against Tech. He'd be a real front runner right now, and he still may run. Adrian Walker. To the 42-yard line of Houston, John Brown makes the stop. And the third-ranked Houston Cougars have got to be tasting it right now as the clock is really their enemy with less than five minutes to play and Texas driving the football. Ron, I've never been in their position to win a national championship. This team's been on probation. They've worked so hard to get back in the national spotlight and to have this happen to them tonight has got to be really disappointing. But they've got a lot of young football players and they've got a great leader in their quarterback. They'll come back next year. Blitz again as the handoff goes to Hadnot, and he takes it inside the 35. Daniel Johnson tries to corral him, but the youngster has a gain of eight on the play. I'm afraid the Texas sleeping giant is awoken, and the NCAA have got to be ready for the Longhorns in the future. They have something good going here, and it's not going to get any worse. David McWilliams and his staff coming into the season, many of the preseason projections were not real good. But right now, Mr. Danielson, you, you hit it on the, the head. They are running on all cylinders. Burst through the middle for the first down, plus five. Trey Hooper holding on for dear life. Let's take a look at the standings of the Southwest Conference. This is the last conference game for the U of H. And of course, because of sanctions, they could not go to the Cotton Bowl, even if they had won this one tonight and won the conference. Texas about to go 5-0. and oh. Then Baylor, A&M, and TCU. Big uproar right now as they've just brought Bruce Handon off the field. Everybody's congratulated him. The freshman had a super game tonight. He had a super game for a senior, let alone a freshman. Adrian Walker knocked out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Got to be second down and short as he has a gain of close to eight. John Brown is there defensively. I have not seen a football team watching college football in a long time that has weapons like this Texas team has. Phil Brown, Chris Samuels, Butch Hadnot, Adrian Walker, those four players are all great running backs. They could fit in a lot of teams and be the star of their football team, and they have to share time on this offense, plus the receivers that they're able to throw at you. out of bounds at the one yard line. Phil Brown who had the big game against Colorado early in the year. He's going to get it deep. The one back offense. Adrian Walker at the top of your screen is going to block for his buddy. He reads it. He walks inside of it. And boy he's into the secondary. And he reads it so nicely. This guy had a big game early in the year when they could have beat Colorado here that night. Performance by this football team. Hey, Bruce. Three touchdowns, and now he's a cheerleader. First and goal at the one yard line. Don't forget, coming up at the end of the telecast, Gary and I will have the Visa players of the game. Pete Gardier, the sophomore out of Houston Lee High School. take it straight ahead and did he get in no signal and they're going to put him down at the one foot line 
Gardier was trying to. If the, he held the on to the ball. Yeah, he, he kind of like did a sucker snap right there. He might, he might have lost that ball before he got down. Let's watch this. You can see none of the Texas players are even going to move on this play. This is a quarterback sneak. And he goes. Nobody else is even aware of it. It's just between the center and him. And he loses the ball before he gets down as he reaches out with one hand. So kind of the, the sucker play quarterback sneak. They get a turnover. So the ball goes over to the Houston Cougars. We're going to take a break. 2.54 left to play. Two fifty four left, Texas forty five to eighteen, and the police trying to keep the fans off the field as they have started coming over the walls down in the end zone. Wengler slings it complete and out of bounds is Alexander. I think about the only person that could keep the fans out, the only thing they could keep, maybe if they run Bebo by there a little couple times, they might be able to clean him out. But I don't think the police are going to have much of an opportunity to keep him off the field when this game ends. So the guard deer play of the quick snap, they ruled that his knee was not down and the fumble going over to Houston. That's the reason the Cougars. And, and he fumbled into the end zone, too, the end zone, so yeah. it comes out to the 20. Complete and now a flag comes down deep in the secondary. Don't forget next week, college game day at 11:30. Then immediately following that, we got action in the Big Ten: Minnesota against Michigan at 12:30. Immediately followed by Penn State at Notre Dame, and then the third game of the night, Georgia at Auburn. All next week, right here on your Total Sports Network, ESPN. Downfield, we have holding by the offense. Ten yard penalty. I think he meant defense. He meant defense, yeah. I think Van Malone held in the secondary away from the play, away from the throw. Butch had that. You were hot tonight. He got Steve coming from his head. Three touchdowns. What a night. Look at that, Steve. He was hot tonight. <laughs> I'm on. Looks one direction, tries to throw back, and miscommunication with Hazard. Hazard and Bubba Jacks with some words back and forth after the play was over, and it's going to be second down and ten. John Jenkins is so committed to this offense. He knows it as well as anyone. He's offensive coordinator for the Houston Gamblers. He's seen it all. He spends his whole summers tracking every type of defense possible. Morning, noon, night, he sleeps about the run and shoot. Weatherspoon in the draw. Has five, has ten into the secondary and a gain of 15 yards to the 45-yard line. Todd Ringo, the junior from Amarillo, is there to make the tackle, and let's go back to Neil Lomax. Neil? Well, obviously, it's been complete domination by the Texas defense on uh, my old run-and-shoot offense. I feel a little bad, but I'll tell you something else, Gary and Ron. The offensive line was really upset that they didn't score a touchdown. Might be a little payback uh, against the Houston Cougars the last couple of years on running up the scores. Back to you guys. Flag comes down, pass is thrown incomplete at the 23-yard line. Verlin Brown, the intended receiver, Oscar Giles was putting on the pressure. And that's going to be holding called against Houston. Ron, I felt the key to this game was could they get pressure on Klingler and control Spoon? They've done it. They've controlled Weatherspoon. He's got 50 yards rushing tonight. Remember, this guy the last two years rushed for 379 yards against them. He did not have the other weapon that the run and shoot had the previous times. You know, that's one of the very tough things when you got a team that throws the ball and it still gets the running game going. They shred it. He stopped it this year. 17. Look at that. And tonight he's averaging like a fullback should, 3.3 yards. First down from the 45. 
Ball incomplete, as you could see, Patrick Cooper had not yet turned around, and the ball was there. Van Malone was the closest man to it, along with Stanley Richard. Now 2:03 to play. You can see the high mom on the tile from Cooper, tile from Cooper right there. In the north end zone, the student section, they have tried to keep them from coming over, but I'll tell you, to the north end zone and also to the other side of the field, they're right it's on. 20 deep. Yes. Hey, get back against the wall. Flag comes down, Klingler scrambling for his Watch life, and the pass incomplete down at the 40-yard line. As Jeff Higgins was putting on the pressure, and he got caught with a comeback block. And that's going to be holding called against Houston again. Sometimes when you chase the quarterback, you don't see out of the blind side. Leroy Truitt's going to get Jeff Higgins. Whoa, his helmet almost came off. That's a decleater. He got him off the ground. But you know, when the score is 45 to 18, they don't hurt as much. Jeff Higgins is the young man that uh, played high school football with Ben Pelt, the quarterback up at Pittsburgh. You remember uh, Ben Pelt Van talked Pelt, uh, yes. very favorably uh, about him, that they were extremely good friends. Well, I, I'm sure Alex had a nice chuckle on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, and the line to make is the Texas 35-yard line. Double pass, Weatherspoon. Hit, hit again, and he'll be knocked down by Anthony Curl. Gain of one on the play. Michael Padgett was also there defensively. And Mark Steed also got in on it, too. Second unit, it's like, it, it, you know, the, we were trying to talk before, they're like sharks now. Everybody wants to get in the game. It's a feeding frenzy. I want to be on TV making the big hit. Well, immediately coming up, it's the Residence Inn College scoreboard. Tim Brando will be there with... Today's action in college football also will take a look at what has happened in the top ten. And Tim will update you on our poll tonight on who should be number one. Probably a lot of people in the Lone Star State saying maybe Texas should get some consideration. Pass complete at the 50-yard line. Out of bounds at the 48. Well, this game is basically, I mean, it's over, 45-18. The only thing I don't agree with is having David Klingler in the football game right now. He's a very valuable asset. At this point in the game, what you're really doing is going for stats. And stats really don't mean anything in the long run of the game. It wins mean it, touchdowns mean it. But look, season lows, 19 completions, 255 yards and one TD. But if he possibly gets hurt right now, John will never forgive himself. Langler gets it away, complete to good down at the 31-yard line. Stanley Richard on the stop for Texas. And the clock will stop for just a moment as they move the chains with 62 seconds left. Bebo still lying down in the end zone. Good three catches for 25 yards. He got 55 coming into the ballgame. Green, complete at the 30, and to the 22-yard line, Anthony Curl is there to make the stop and hazard. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are from the University of Houston, middle linebacker McCoy. 18 tackles, 8 solo, and for the University of Texas, Pete Gardere. It is part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics. Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Pete Gardere, the player of the game for Texas, and Ryan McCoy. Ryan, Ryan McCoy, the freshman from Beaumont. Larry Coyer said he's the best freshman linebacker in the country. We said, have you seen Marvin Jones from Florida State play? <laughs> But this guy's the real thing, too. Langler sings it in the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Hazard. <laughs> 24 seconds left on the clock. Uh, we don't need this. The object is to win the game. 
This is what is so tough about playing the deep zones and the prevent defenses against this. When you've got a rocket arm like this guy has, there's no zone that people are close enough together. He can throw the ball 30, 40 yards on a line, and the, the zone stretches because you got four people out there. You have to have a man-to-man -man covered out there if you have the ability to do it. Hazard, six catches, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Houston goes for a pair. Wengler has it incomplete. Trying to get Merlin Brown in the end zone. Big day tomorrow here on ESPN. The game day at noon Eastern time. Then prime time coverage at 7 o'clock. And then our ball games of all evening. 8 o'clock Eastern time. San Francisco in Dallas. They're gonna now have this to, one only has 24. They're going to have to call this game. Here come the fans onto the field. They're they are gonna, running from both ends of the field. They're going to have to call this game. And now the goal post in the north end of the end zone. Students are jumping onto the goal post. This is, there really is no need for this. You know, the, the only problem I see with this run is Texas should be used to winning these games. They don't have to carry on like this. This is a very proud tradition school, and they should just step up, and this should be part of it. Come on, students. Let's get back in the stands, watch the game. Let your team enjoy the celebration. Let the players on the field enjoy the celebration. They're the ones that earned it tonight. Excellent point. You know, these are the same students that are that, that are the first one to criticize the team when they lose a game, and then they join the join the team in a big victory. Well, they got them off the field, and now the goalpost is about to go. recap this again. Texas is back. They've emerged. The sleeping giant has awakened. They just are back in the national spotlight. They're going to be a top five, six, seven team now. We said they had to stop the run and stop the spoons tonight. They did that. They put pressure on Klingler and Peter Gardier has came through in a big way. Those three things made the score 45-24 and the last couple touchdowns were no brainers and no, no big deal. Well, we have 24 seconds to get off the clock. The uh, students are back off the field. They have gotten away from the goalpost. But in the interim, a 15-yard penalty has been assessed against Texas. And Houston's Roman Anderson will be setting this onside kick from the 50-yard line. People who watch the score and they see it 45-24, don't be fooled. This was total domination tonight. 45-24 is not any indication at how much Texas dominated this Houston football team tonight. and moves his ball club over and it has been caught by Texas and that will do it. In fact, without 25 seconds on the clock, they'll have to go on the knee one time. Bubba Jacks made the recovery on the special teams. So the conference standings after this evening are going to look like this. Texas at 5-0, 7-1 overall. Houston will go to 7-1 in conference play. They have two non-conference games left. Baylor, Texas A&M, and TCU. Gardner will go down on one knee with this, and that is going to do it. And here they come onto the field. I don't know if 
John Jenkins and David McWilliams will ever find each other out there amidst 30,000 of their closest friends. The clock shows double zeros, and this one is over. The Houston, are the Texas theme this year has been whatever it takes. And tonight, they force six turnovers, and Klingler, a season low in completions and also in yards. They did whatever it took. Whatever it took, John Jacobs said the run and shoot couldn't be stopped, but when you're outmatched physically, the front four from the, this great Texas defense overpowered him and didn't give David a chance to set up and show what he could do. So our final score, the Texas Longhorns 45 and the Houston Cougars 24. Coming up next week here on ESPN, game day at 11.30 with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Charlene Hawks. Then we'll go to the Big Ten, Minnesota Michigan, followed by Penn State at Notre Dame, and the third game is Georgia at Auburn, that at 7.30. All coming up next week here on ESPN. Again, the final, the Longhorns 45 and the Houston Cougars 24. We're going to take a break, and then Tim Brando will wrap up today's happenings in the CFA. Before the gaming.